name is Chris Orwig, as Mark mentioned. I'm a photographer and I'm a teacher. And in a sense, in the current context, we are all photographers, amateurs and professionals alike. Whether we're driven by personal interest, pets, profession, or passion. And I believe that we're united or bound by a common desire to capture, captivate, and compel. For by taking pictures, memories are magnified, forgotten moments are materialized. Somehow we get more out of life with camera in hand. So the big question is, how do we take more interesting photographs, whether of mountaintops or, 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 or of life in general? And when we take pictures, like this photograph of my daughter Annika, something happens. We remember more deeply. It affects who we are. As Mark Rabu once said, photography, oh, I messed up. Um, as my Mark, I'll get to what Mark said. But back to how then do we take these more interesting photographs, whether of mountaintops or of moments or of memories of people or of places that have since passed on. At the photography school where I teach, one of the aspiring graduates was having his portfolio reviewed by a legendary photographer, Jay Maisel. And the review went fine, yet afterwards the student said, Jay, how do I take more interesting pictures without skipping a beat? Jay volleys back, become a more interesting person. Who we are affects how we see. In order to be great, we have to reach, we have to stretch. Well, how then does technique fold into this? I love what Rodney Smith says. He says that stillness of hand can never make up for emptiness of heart. And what he's talking about is that we can master technique, like holding a camera properly, but it's never enough. In order to be great, like say this world champion surfer Kelly Slater, we need more than technique. And when we get close, we realize that greatness is more than the sum of technical expertise. Well, technique, though, requires repetition, right? So how then do we acquire it? Do we just push the shutter more frequently? Well, we all know that doesn't work. Perhaps here we can learn something from our friends who are poets. Consider this. What the novelist says in 20,000 words, the poet says in 20. And after we read a poem, we not only have more information, but we have more experience. And poets reduce and simplify. They don't overstate the obvious. They don't tell us too much of the story. Thus, it draws us in. What they're trying to do is arrange things in a unique way. It's like what John Sarkowski said of Ansel Adams. He said that Ansel had the same vocabulary available to you and I. It was just that he arranged the words in a unique way. And so as photographers, we seek to arrange or compose photographs so that they're simple and strong. Now, this isn't just reductionist. It's not just reducing and simplifying. Rather, it's reducing and simplifying and deepening. It's looking at how can we say more with less. And poems, being so small, they're sparse, there's so little space, they almost have to be a concentration or a distillation, almost like evaporated seawater where only the salt remains. So here's the good news. The good news is that the world doesn't need another Ansel Adams or Annie Leibovitz. The world needs you, even now with camera in hand or pocket or, your, in, or in your bag. So how then do we start to take better pictures? Where do we begin? Well, perhaps the most common photographic act is that of soliciting expression or emotion, right? I once had the privilege of photographing musician and rock star Ben Harper. And before the shoot, someone interrupted what we were doing, and they were there to kind of get a, a trophy photograph of a rock star. Ben, in his kindness, said, oh, you know, that's fine. But the woman wasn't happy with his expression. And so she said, Ben, smile. Ben, say cheese. She, she pushed, she prodded. Ben, smile, smile, smile. And when she said, say cheese, on those words he snapped back, lady, I smile with my eyes. And that's what poets do for us. They expand how we think about emotion and expression. And the eyes can say so much, whether it's a smile or strength or reflection or resolve. And you and I as photographers, we have a choice. We can resolve to create images one way or another. Like Anne Lamott once said, you can do brickwork as a laborer or as an artisan. So you can resolve, you can choose to be complacent, to trudge and toil and to amass an even larger quantity of mediocre pictures. Or you can take the poet's path. You can seek to savor life one moment at a time to develop who you are, to say more with less. And I think through it all, you'll see anew, suddenly, things that were previously concealed will be revealed. In the ordinary, you'll discover the extraordinary. 
and the mundane, the, the mystery and magnificence, the poetics of pictures, and through it all, the smile, I think, in your eyes will not only reveal how you now see, but who you have become. Thank you.